Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in Dentistry and More. Today we have Hemostatic Agents in Oral Surgery. So normally, uh, blood circulation through intact vasculature happening without any thrombus formation. Okay, so this hemostasis is the state of fluid equilibrium in the vessel. So hemostatic agents are the products or materials we apply to cause the bleeding to stop so there are various mechanisms by which the bleeding can be stopped so the methods what we can apply are classified as mechanical methods thermal or energy based methods then uh, chemical methods and also we have topical agents uh, topical hemostatic agents which can be again classified as uh, passive and active agents passive and active agents so let's learn the process of hemostasis and hemostatic agents So the natural process of hemostasis or coagulation we already learned uh, there are mechanisms such as intrinsic pathway extrinsic pathway all this intrinsic and extrinsic pathway and the coagulation cascade how the fibrin load is formed with the help of various coagulation factor so we know everything Coagulation factors, factor number 1 to 13. So this we learned in uh, physiology uh, textbook. So there are natural inhibitors of coagulation cascade uh, which is uh, protein C, protein S, tissue factor, pathway inhibitor, uh, antithrombin or thrombomotlin. These are the natural inhibitors of coagulation cascade. So why to use hemostatic agents? It is mainly to minimize the blood loss and improve visualization. It also saves operative time. So it reduces the post operative drainage and infection and it decreases hospital length of stay. So what are the characteristics of hemostatic agents? So first thing is it's Capability to stop large vessel, arterial and venous bleeding within minutes of application and there should not be any requirement for mixing or pre-application preparation and it should be simple to apply, it should be lightweight and durable, it should have long shelf life in extreme environment and it should be safe to use with no risk of injury to tissues or transmission of infection and it should also be cost effective so we have various mechanisms mechanical methods thermal or energy based methods chemical methods topical hemostatic agents which can be passive and uh, active agents and some other methods are also there so we'll start with the mechanical methods so mechanical methods we have uh, direct pressure mechanism that is direct pressure then in mechanical we have fabric pads and sponges fabric pads sponges or gauzes then we have sutures staples or ligating clips so these comes under mechanical methods so the direct pressure direct pressure is the simplest and fastest method so it is the surgeon's first choice because the arterial bleeding uh, can better be controlled than the venous bleeding so that is a direct pressure method then we have 
fabric uh, pads gauzes and sponges so application of direct pressure concept uh, packaging of this uh, body cavity or the surgical area a number of sponges used during surgery needs to be counted and these are like temporary measures then sutures staples and ligating clips so sutures and ties used as ligature to tie off the blood vessels chances of tissue reaction uh, and injury and allergic reactions are there uh, for staples we need to have stapling device nowadays uh, staples are gaining much popularity uh, efficient method it is uh, when uh, we have a moving tissue then ligature clips are uh, quick and easy to apply uh, we need to have a applicator and site of application should be very clearly visible for to apply this so now let's move to the thermal methods so in thermal or energy based methods uh, first one we have electro surgery electro surgery then we have ultrasonic devices then we have lasers so electro surgery uh, the use of high frequency alternating current for cutting coagulating or vaporizing tissues but there are potential risks for this because it can cause injury uh, patient injury user injury and there will be chances of fires and electromagnetic interference so there are two methods one is monopolar and bipolar monopolar and bipolar so the monopolar is the most frequently used bipolar is better on delicate tissues or small anatomic structures so bipolar vessel sealing device which applies heat with high compression and which is capable of simultaneously sealing and transecting vessels up to 7 mm in diameter so large tissues uh, can be managed using bipolar devices the second one is ultrasonic devices which converts electrical energy to mechanical energy okay electrical energy to mechanical energy which simultaneously cuts and coagulates the tissues and it needs less uh, thermal power so it is uh, less damage to the tissues compared to electro surgery and the last one is lasers so laser energy delivered to the target sites uh, and it can be reflected scattered transmitted or absorbed so this is a very uh, newer technique uh, used for hemostasis so this all comes under thermal or energy based electro surgery ultrasonic devices and lasers now let's move on to the chemical methods in chemical methods we have the most common epinephrine or adrenaline epinephrine is vasoconstrictor then we have the vitamin k vitamin k is involved in blood coagulation we all know then we have protamine then we have desmopressin this is a very commonly asked question the hemostatic agents the last one we have lysine analogs So the epinephrine, epinephrine is the most commonly used which causes direct vasoconstriction and increases the heart rate. Okay, so the problem is with it is not good for heart uh, patients or patients with heart problems because it increases the systolic and diastolic pressure. So it can be applied topically uh, or injected with uh, local anesthesia. So most of the local anesthetic agents has epinephrine in 1 is to 80,000. Next we have the vitamin K. So it is administered preoperatively 
to reverse the effect of warfarin and to avoid need of transfusion of FFP to avoid the need of transfusion of FFP that is nothing but fresh frozen plasma next we have protamin protamin is the only agent with ability to reverse heparin anticoagulation okay so this heparin and warfarin are anticoagulants so this protamin can reverse the heparin anticoagulation effect which can cause anaphylaxis acute pulmonary vasoconstriction and right ventricular failure so it should be used cautiously next we have desmopressin so it stimulates the release of one Wilbrand factor and enhances the primary hemostatic mechanism then lastly we have lysine analogs so they are amino caproic acid amino caproic acid then uh, tranxamic acid tranxamic acid then uh, they are uh, anti fibrinolytic agents and competitively inhibit the activation of plasminogen okay plasminogen so they inhibit activation of plasminogen and they are variable in effect that is the lysine analogs so these are the chemical methods epinephrine vitamin k protamin desmopressin and lysine analogs now let's see what are the topical agents topical agents we have both uh, passive and active uh, products so topical agents which provides a physical lattice like matrix that adheres to bleeding site okay there will be a matrix so this matrix activates the extrinsic clotting pathway extrinsic clotting pathway then platelet aggregates and form a clot so that is a concept this method that is a passive topical agents which provides a lattice matrix then this matrix activates the extrinsic pathway then there will be platelets and clot formation so this passive agents which rely on fibrin production and hence can be used only in a patient with intact coagulation cascade so there should be no problem with the normal hemostatic mechanism so passive agents can absorb several times its weight in fluid still this expansion of the agent can cause complications like compression of the surrounding tissues so we have the first one collagen based products collagen based products so uh activated uh, these uh, products are activated on contact with bleeding and it provide stable matrix for clot formation which enhances the platelet aggregation degranulation and release of clotting factors so which is basically derived from either bovine tendon or bovine dermal collagen bovine tendon or bovine dermal collagen bovine normal collagen so this is derived from one of these one of these materials that is bovine tendon or bovine dermal collagen so the product is micro fibrillar collagen hemostat microfibrillar collagen hemostat which is also known as avitin 
A V I T N A avity so this is microfibrillar collagen hemostat or avitin this is a which is derived from purified bovine dermal collagen it is very effective against when there is capillary venous or small arterial bleeding and it attracts platelets and promote plug formation it inactivates thrombin and but there are some potential adverse events such as allergic reactions uh, inflammation or potential for infection and abscess formation so that is microfibrillar collagen hemostat and the next one in passive group that is absorbable collagen hemostat sponge absorbable collagen hemostat sponge which is instat okay this is avitin this is instat so this is like uh, derived from purified and lyophilized bovine dermal tendon which adheres to the surface when wet and does not stick to the instrument and collagen sponge which gets absorbed into 8 to 10 weeks which control bleeding in 2 to 5 minutes next we have oxidized regenerated cellulose which is known as sergi cell okay so this reacts with blood increase in size and forms a gelatinous mass after 24 to 48 hours and promotes clot formation so the potential complications mm, encapsulation of fluid uh, then stenosis of vascular structure burning or uh, the stinging sensations headaches all can be adverse effects then we have the normal gelatins or gelatin or gel form So these are derived from purified bovine gelatin solutions it can be used in dry or wet form but conforms easily to wounds and therefore can be used for irregular wounds that is gelatin or gel forms then we have polysaccharide hemospheres polysaccharide hemospheres okay so this is derived from vegetable starch and it contains no human or animal component okay so these are the passive topical agents so it was uh, first one was avitin that was microfibrillar collagen hemostat then the instat which is absorbable collagen hemostat sponge then we have sergi cell which is oxidized regenerated cellulose then gel form which is gelatins and polysaccharide hemospheres now let's see what are the topical agents in active category so the mechanism of active uh, topical agents is different from uh, passive in passive it was like providing a physical lattice uh, matrix which adheres to bleeding site which is activating the extrinsic clot pathway and platelet aggregates and formation of clot but whereas an active method it already has biological activity biological activity is default so it participate directly at the end of coagulation cascade so direct involvement in the coagulation mechanism that is a coagulation cascade and it stimulates fibrillation at the bleeding site to produce a clot so thrombin acts at the end of the clotting clotting cascade action of agent is not affected by clotting factor deficiencies or platelet malfunctions so it can also be given to patients receiving anti platelets or anti coagulant therapy that is uh, warfarin uh, heparin uh, medicines if patient is already taking also we can use active agents so these active topical agents provide hemostasis within 10 minutes and they are more effective in controlling 
pleading than the passive agents so the basic uh, products are thrombin products thrombin products thrombin products so the first one is bovine thrombin bovine thrombin this is a active topical agent so bovine thrombin applied using a pump or spray kit or in a saturated absorbable gelatin sponge but the adverse effects it has antibody formation to bovine thrombin which can lead to coagulopathy allergic reactions then we have pooled human plasma thrombin pooled human plasma thrombin so this is delivered uh, via saturated absorbable gelatin sponge it has risk for viral or um, viral disease transmission and we have recombinant thrombin recombinant thrombin so reduce risk of antibody formation and eliminates risk of viral transmission so that is a topical agents and we have one more category that is flowable hemostatic agents flowable hemostatic agents so these uh, flowable hemostatic agents combine passive and active hemostatic agents into a single application product which work by blocking the blood flow and actively converting fibrinogen to fibrin so uh, two types of products are available in flowable one is absorbable bovine gelatin and pooled human thrombin the bovine gelatin plus pooled human thrombin and next is porcine gelatin porcine gelatin and any of the thrombin types what we learned previously so both the products do not contain fibrinogen and Uh, the direct contact with blood is necessary so there are some sealant products are also there in flowable uh, fibrin sealants uh, fibrin sealants are there uh, it is then we have polyethylene glycol polyethylene glycol polymers they are coseal duracel and progel okay so these are the polyethylene glycol polymers and also we have albumin glutaraldehyde this all comes under flowable hemostatic agents so these are the various hemostatic agents which comes under flowable hemostatic agents so basically we have mechanical thermal chemical topical which is again passive active and the last one flowable so hope you understood uh, this topic of uh, hemostatic agents which is very frequently asked uh, question in university paper so i'll come up with a new topic in oral surgery thank you